One more match after this. As JD will kick it away. Wesley will get it first with that oh so familiar 818 tag. And he'll bring it out to the 29 yard line. And we talk about veterans and you talk about guys having first time trips. See Trey right there and he got eliminated, but we got a lot of new faces out here in San Francisco. It's crazy too. You see guys like JD and K Mac for their first live event. Technically, you know, they've made it to the final four of a club championship where they've played in person, but that's not really considered an EA major live event. So this is their first chance time kind of really being in there where each game that you win kind of gets you that significant cash infusion. And like I said at the top of this game during the intro, Scott, JD, as Madden players, you're always trying to kind of build your brand, build your reputation, you know, get the respect of your peers, the other people in the community, and JD can just grab a boatload of respect if he would be able to knock out West from this tournament, who is very well respected in the Madden community. A former Texans club champion, has been to plenty of majors, labs with the best of the best, and you heard the guys, he is the heavy favorite going into this game. So first to Timber Wesley, he'll start with it first. Carr throws in a coverage oh. and it will be picked off. Bounced around and then landed in the hands of Birds. And how about that smart, you know, start for JD? Who doesn't like a good underdog story? <laughs> JD from Oxen Hill, Maryland, 20 years old. Comes out off rip and West with a questionable read, known for be, usually being super crispy with his read. Looking like young Kiv did at the start of this bracket, but Kiv was able to turn it around. Let's see if West can mimic some of that. He already kind of mimicked Kiv's hairdo. You got to remember, old school Joe Rice didn't have the lettuce looking like that. He started hanging out with the Kiver. Now he's got a nice set of lettuce. It's Joe Rice. Was Wes. I'm used to He's the formerly yeah, I mean, known I as Joe Rice, but yeah. he changed his name on us to Wes. I showed up at in Houston, Texas, right there at NRG, and I'm like, what's up, Joe Rice? He's like, it's Wesley now. I'm like, I'm not calling you that. But now I am. He's earned it. Yeah, you can. A little rebranding. You got the credentials. You, you tell us what you want to be called, and we'll do our best. Just a, a Joe Rice may slip out every <laughs> once in a while. It's not intentional. And Mixon. It's absolutely nothing. That's going to bring up second and ten. Joe Mixon. He's one of the best running backs. And that halfback round that you could have got, I believe he's 91 speed, that team of the week item. And, you know, when we introduced that Joe Mixon into Madden Ultimate, Joe, Joe, Ultimate Team, Joe Mixon came down to the studio himself and was on Good Morning Madden and unveiled the item. We got to meet him. He was a really cool guy. He's a big fan of the MCS and competitive Madden. He watches a ton of the broadcast, follows a ton of our competitors, plays in some CFM with him, plays some games with him. So huge shout out to Joe Mixon. Really cool dude and, you know, one of many athletes or celebrities that I've talked to that supports the MCS and is a fan of our product. And we thank you guys for doing that. And, you know, we should also thank everybody in the chat that's been supporting. I know it's been a long day. A lot of you guys have been sticking with us but we love you guys and you know thank you we wouldn't be here without you guys third and nine you know they say an artist without an audience defeats the purpose and so without those guys out there watching day in and day out through these 40 some days a year it, it really is senseless for us to be here for sure Got a good one between JD and 818. That's Wesley. Big fourth down here, Scott. And if you're JD, you're getting aggressive right now. You're the underdog. You're forced to turn over already. He's trying to make the best of it. You don't want to waste that turnover. This is a big play for him. He can get a ton of momentum if he picks this up. Vic. And it sacks him up. Going to be a turnover on downs in great field position at the 38. 
I like what Joe Rice did right there. Pressure burst pipes. You're going up against, you know, JD, not a ton of experience in a big fourth down. He sends the dogs after him. Gets the sack, forces the turnover it down, and let's see if he can get his offense going. Tyreek Hill creating a whole lot of space with that speed inside the red zone at the 17-yard line. Uh, I've hammered pocket presence throughout this tournament, Scott, or throughout this event to the chat. I want you guys to pay attention to Joe Rice and the way, oh, Wes, sorry, the way that he's going to move around with his quarterback because he really knows how to do it on an elite level. He knows how to go into that two-step two drop back, step up if he needs to, roll out if he needs to. He moves around with that quarterback on an elite level. Something you'll definitely want to pay attention to because I know for a fact there's a ton of people in the chat that can improve prove their pocket presence. It'll be a second and eight at the 15. Carr. Using a little bit of his legs and slides down at the 10. So we're going to have a third and short and coming. And let's see what Wesley does. See if he gets back in the gun. Bunch to the left. Needs to get to the seven and a half, and it's going to depend on the spot. He got the first down. It's a first and goal. Very smart, too, when he was running with Derek Carr. You see him cover up that ball, Scott. You hold the RB button. And that's going to allow you to cover the ball, and that's going to significantly reduce the fumble chance if you get hit. And good thing he did that, because that tackler got one of those strip ball animations. Really helped out Carr on that one. He's also on conservative, as well as ball carrying. He's just running it with the quarterback here out of the gun punch. Here comes second and goal from the six. It's that bubble gum, as user likes to call it. It's supposed to be, you know, a type of reverse play. And he goes to the toss. It's been efficient. And this time it's just that touchdown. I like the way that Wes has done that in this tournament. He comes out in that gun punch. Everybody knows he's a specialist out of that formation. You get out in your pass defense, and then he audibles down to that single back tight, uh, that single back bunch toss. And you talk to a lot of these players, a lot of people will do that. They do it in the NFL a lot. It's a dummy formation. A lot of the times you come out in that bunch knowing you're going to go to this toss right here. You just want your opponent to set up the defense for the bunch. NFL teams do that all the time. They give you a certain look, but they know that they're just going to shift to a completely different formation to try to catch you off guard. And some of our best Madden pros do that as well. Wes is one of them. Young Kiv likes to do that a lot too when I was speaking with him. It's some high-level stuff both in Madden, competi competitive Madden, and in real life football. Yeah, they'll let you make all those defensive adjustments and then boom, right under center. You see that a Get lot. rocking. You see that, Scott, from a lot of our guys that have that high audible percentage. They know to incorporate that into their scheme. Hands it off to Mixon, can't get away. That's Phillips who wraps him up at the 25 after a short game. If you're JT, don't want to let this game get away from you. You know what? West got the ball first. You, you forced a turnover. He got a stop on you. He scored. But if you can answer, you know, back right here, you're still in position. You're where you need to be. You get the ball to start the second half. So you got to put it together here if you're JD. Hands it off to Mixon again. This time he's got a block out in front. If he can get it, Gene Upshaw can't get there, though. Before he's brought down at the 47. He was trying to slow up. And that should take us to the end of the first quarter with your score, Wesley. Seven, JD zero, but he's on a drive. I asked JD, you know, about his playbook. He's also in that Broncos playbook, and everyone else we talked to in this Madden Challenge bracket was thrilled to get the Broncos playbook. He wasn't too thrilled about it. He says, I'm a passer. It's more of a running playbook. I like to run the 3-4, but he's a guy that wants to air it out. Up top to Cooks. It knocked away at the last minute. It was in his mitts. Good coverage deep. As we say, he likes to air it out. Boy, he tried to go up top to Cooks. That Cooks only 91 speed. Wasn't able to get the toasty and run by the secondary. 
Vic once again will hand it off to Mixon. And here comes a huge third down. It's funny because in Madden, Scott, it, you, you say the like, huge third down. Or this is a big play. We say that all the time, so many times in the game. But there really are so many big plays in high-level Madden just because of the short quarters. You're only playing five-minute quarters. It's such a short game. Each drive is as significant as the next. So it really sets you up for this big moment after big moment. And it's a pick. Peanut jumps the route. And Tillman is off to the races. And Mixon will bring him down to the 10-yard line. Speaking of big moments right there, J.D., I think he thought that he just had man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. Joe Rice likely has the defender in a soft squad or a cloud flat, and that's what they do. Finds the pylon and another touchdown for Wesley. Back-to-back -back rushing touchdowns as the BAT finds its way through, and the lead is now 14. We've seen several players come back from, you know, down two possessions. But those players were guys like Young Kim or whatnot. I don't know if JD will be able to do it. It's a Snickers replay. This is what would set up the touchdown. It's an interception by Peanut Tillman. I thought he was going to take it to the house if it wasn't for Joe Mixon. And I was wrong. He wasn't even in a cloud flat or a soft squat. That really was just man-to-man -man coverage. But Tillman just that good to break on the cut immediately. It was just all over the out route. That's just one of West's best players on the team making a big play. And there's a reason you pick Tillman in that legend round, that oh-so-valuable legend round that you get in Mutt Draft. So a second and four. Genie now trails by two scores. Vic gets it outside, and he's flirting with Tillman, on, Tillman again. It's in the game, it's in the game Tillman. <laughs> Point differential matters no more. You throw a, another pick here. Yeah. What's it could be night-night. What's he saying? If you have small children, it might be time to turn them away. I mean, it's not time to put the kids to bed yet. But if JD can't get something going here, might be getting close to that time. He used to roll out the sayings a lot. You know, the first couple of years of commentating med. I'll let you do it now. I don't think you want to do that. I just, I just stick to the strip. What am I going to do when, when you leave? <laughs> I haven't even thought. I don't know. I haven't even Can you call college football? Do you want to come on Sirius XM with me next week? I'm not going to get you fired. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this bozo that you brought with you, Coltrane? Yeah, I'm not here to promote myself, but I'd love for you guys to tune in to Sirius XM next week as I start a new chapter. Last five years has been incredible. But right now, J.D., he needs some points here with 2.30 to go. Touchdown gets him all the way back in the ball game. Remember, we said he gets it to start the second half. You're here for a reason. You, you can get it done. You got the tools you need, but you're going to have to execute. Protect this football. Oh, gosh. And it's Bates. Jumps the route. And he's down by contact at the 43. I'm not sure he was touched. I thought he was going to get up and keep running. Some of these just aren't. I mean, these are just bad reads. He, he's throwing right at West. These are easy plays for West to make and look for West to get aggressive here and really try to put him away. It's Carr. It's sacked up. That'll bring up a second and 18 here at the two-minute warning. How about our guy West trying to dabble into a, become a two eSport athlete? He's got some interviews yeah. trying to also become a player in that 2k league we saw radiant do it this year you know transitioned over from the 2k league to competitive madden wesley might be trying to go the other way yeah he's going the other way transitioning from you know some competitive madden getting involved in that 2k league and he's one heck of a player on the sticks neither of those guys are going to give up madden by the way neither of those oh, guys are sure. going to give up Madden. why would you too i mean <laughs> i know they're making it happen on both sides and Cooks. 
able to haul it in at the 29. Car. And no serve. Not happening. If you're West right now, you have to be careful taking these sacks. The one thing you don't want to do here, even though you're in complete control, is let yourself get knocked out of field goal range. It's important you end this half of three possessions. And he's oh. going to take another sack. These are mistakes that could come back to bite you. It's not likely, but this, this is not well played right now at the end of the half from our guy Wesley Gittins formerly known as Joe Rice. And this time it goes to Tyreek Hill. And he'll use a timeout. He's got one remaining with 14 seconds left to go in the half. Right when you say it's not well played, he says, shut up, RG. I want to just dial up like a good 30-yard dot right to Tyreek. He's just making this look easy. Here comes a free blitzer. And you got to run this down and kick the field goal. Can't play with fire right now. Look at JT. Poor JT. I mean, that look says it all right now. It's a tough spot to be. Playing for your tournament life. Down three possessions against a guy this good in Wes. He's been patient. He kicks it through at the end of the half. And it's a 17-0 lead. Here in the wild card round at halftime. So let's check in with James. Scott Cole, thank you so much. Make sure you your EA account is linked to your Twitch account to receive Twitch drops for a chance to score up to two challenge exclusive legends. A 92, Nat 92 OVR Deion Sanders and a Nat 92 OVR Devin Hester. Always great to have a little prime time in your life. Let's take a live look at the Snickers Players Lounge. And you know, RG, you asked for it, my man. You asked for it, a little Snickers ice. Look at user. User, what are you, you're not a player right now, bro. Come on. Look at user. Getting in there, trying to get that, that Snickers ice cream, bro. How out of line is that? That's for oh. the players. He's Come back on. there, wet and beak. Oh, and, oh, and, oh, and then now there's Mazesco's Nick Mazesco. Now trying to wet beak. Look at oh Mazesco. Get him out of there. Oh, oh the my kick. goodness. Crush is going in. Prodigy in the house. Come on, bro. I'm telling you, though, that's going to boost morale back there in that <laughs> Snickers lounge. There's no way that the Snickers ice cream doesn't come through and instantly boost morale. If there's things I know, it sings like that. How many of those do you think it would take to get JD's morale up right now? He's trailing 17 to nothing. Honestly, if they could just get him one, it might be all he needs. You've seen the commercials. By the way, my that guy, Jimmy Coe, doing a good job at the desk over the last couple days. We get breaks. You and I get to down some pizza, some Snickers. Old Jimmy Coe at the desk has just been hanging out. You call him Jimmy Coe. <laughs> sounds like a, like a mob boss or something. <laughs> you don't mess with Jimmy Coe. <laughs> Second and 15. He knows Ga you know Dave Casper. Come on now. Not Casper. Get, not getting involved in that. Another sack will push him back five yards. Almost feels like a must touchdown drive. How fast did User like weasel his way off of the desk? I know. Like, how did he get wind to get back there to get the Snickers ice cream? Ooh. And Clark along the boundary will pick up a key first down, but that's a tight window, RG. Part of the problem for JD is he's running, you know, this Denver offense and he's running this strong close. And, you know, this isn't his normal stuff, so he, he's kind of, you know, just going with what's the best available. But a guy like Wes, he's used to playing against a strong close from the guys that are used to running it, that are the best in the world at running it. So JD's going to have some trouble just mimicking it at a high level like Wes is used to seeing. And that, that's got to be contributing to why he's just, Wes is just playing such good defense. Because he's been practicing for this Broncos playbook thoroughly as he got ready for this event. Vic, here comes some more pressure. Steps and throws, and there's Dallas Clark again. And that's close to the marker. Yeah, it's going to be third and inches. Couldn't turn up field and pick up the first down. And 
It won't matter. He'll move the chains cross midfield to the 46. Coach AD, nice dot followed by a run for the first down. See if he can keep it going. Vic back up under center. The lefty just nowhere to go. Needs to get that ball out quicker. West is sending the house at him. He had the drag or the flat route wide open, but that needs to be a quick hot read. Just hesitated. All it takes is that split second of hesitation and what would be a completion ends up resulting in a sack. Vic. He's just not able to use his legs even as Wesley clicks in and sends the cornerback. Vic is getting pummeled right now, Coltrane. I know it's just a video game, but I'm, the backup? I'm, I'm feeling for him <laughs> out on there. The base. Every, on. every time he drops back, he's getting hit out there. Let's go, JD. Get it going. Hey, get, hey, get, 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 get yourself back in this ball game. Third and 18. And he's in this Trey Y flex. This is just the formation that Wes is so comfortable playing defense against. And another sack will push him back. It's fourth and forever. So he'll get out his kicker. That's Dixon, not Ronnie Dickstein, and he'll punt it away. You know you ran into Ronnie earlier today. I don't even want to know. But you don't he's a legend. What it looks like. The chat's just out there like, what the <laughs> heck is Scott talking about? That's pretty much been my M.O. for the last four or five years. Little Easter eggs all over the place. Hey, we are calling video games. Why not have some Easter eggs, right? <laughs> that was cool to see. What was it, Skimbo Joke in the new Super Bowl commercial for Madden? It's a nice little with Easter egg. Yeah, that Mannings. was cool to see. Second and eight. Shout out to our guys, Gibbs and Farrells in the the rest of the Good Morning Madden crew holding it down like a fat kid on a blanket. They're holding it down right now, too, in Miami. Those Super Bowl festivities. They just have forget the EA Sports forget ball I, off Forget there. I gave them a shot out there. Yeah, they're all swagging around. <laughs> yeah, forget it. Third and ten. You know, last year I did the, the red eye to Atlanta. This year, no way. Not heading to Miami, heading home. It's time for the fourth quarter, presented by Snickers. I dig because suddenly people think it's okay to talk on speakerphone in public. What was that? Oh, nothing. Just some lady digging a giant hole. Digging a huge hole. Speaking of digging a huge hole, there's Nick Mazesco, now the hoarder of the Snickers ice cream. I, I told you to get him out of there. What's Jen doing? Jen usually super on point, but why give him all the Nick? Man, he's worked hard. He's been doing the social, calling some games. How is user still going in? I hope that's not that same ice cream bar. He's baby sploosing over there. That's gotta be at least number two. Doesn't take that long to put one of those things down, Scott. You and me know these things. This is true. Start of the fourth quarter, five minutes. Another run up the middle here for Wesley, who's really been in control. I miss calling him Joe Rice. I'm just going to throw it out there for some reason. Well, you know, I mean, it was Wesley, Joe Montana and Jerry Rice. It he was just his, combined them. It was his pop's old school PlayStation PSN name. That but that's what his dad did. Yeah, that yeah. was his dad's and. He's a Falcons fan, so maybe he wanted to get away from it, but I'm just telling you, it's throwing me off. I got to have a talk with him after this. I mean, I, I miss the old alias. Hands it off once again. I know it's kind of like Bam and scheming. You know, every once in a while, I still put the Bam out there. Put the Bam out there, yep. Had a couple guys ch change it up, huh? Hate to see it. Up the middle, nothing there, but fights forward for a few more. Gets to the 35. It's going to be a second and seven. Yeah, you just get the feeling right now. You can kind of see JD's body language. These guys are kind of just going through the motions. 
You know, J.D. not using any of those timeouts yet, not getting too aggressive. West just running the ball, milking the clock, doing what he needed to do to get out of here. He's going to advance, but you know what? They said if he advances, it will, let's just assume West does, goes up against Deliverance. That would be a good matchup. That is a matchup that I am really looking forward to, Scott. Get close to the two-minute warning as he chews the clock a little bit more here on third and three. I promise it. Joe Montana story earlier in the day and didn't never tell it. But I'm at NFL Network getting ready to do a show and I run into Joe Montana, you know, back in the dressing room area. And I said, hey Joe, you broke my dad's heart in 1977 when you beat Clemson as Notre Dame. Made him cry and he looked at me in, he didn't even stop, looked at me walking by and he goes, I made a lot of dads cry, kid. And just kept walking by. <laughs> Cool as ice, Joe Montana just owned me in the hallway. Didn't even make eye contact. I mean, when, when it takes a special individual to have that level of swag, Joe Montana has that level <laughs> of does, swag. He does have that, that swag. Up. Hands it off to Hill. I'll try to tell a few more stories as the, as the weekend moves on. Real quick, Scott. If you're JD, don't let this discourage you. You continue to get better and better. You've made the Panthers Final Four two years in a row. You finally made a live event. Use this as a learning experience. Learn from it and get better. You got a lot of Madden ahead of you.